Hello guys welcome back to our anime moments. Guys please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Today is explanation of upcoming episode of Soul Land 2 Peerless Tang Men based on novel. So let's start. Both teams, please send your next competing members up to the stage. From Shrek Academy, we have Bay Bay. From the Sun Moon Imperial Soul Engineering Academy, we have Michael. Both members, please ascend the stage. Shrek Academy held the advantage now that the individual round had reached this stage. They'd even laid a solid foundation for the upcoming 2-2-3 fight. Shrek Academy had only sent out a soul ancestor, Shusansha, yet he'd been able to overcome two class 5 soul engineers. His contributions were immense. Furthermore, one of his opponents had died, while the other had been gravely injured. They couldn't compete in the 2-2-3 fight. This meant that Shrek Academy had already won one round out of the three rounds in the 2-2-3 fight. And they just had to win two rounds out of three in the 2-2-3 fight. Even though Shrek Academy had lost Shu Sansha, their two soul emperors had yet to compete. Their advantage in the individual round was obvious. Team Sun Moon's teacher squinted his eyes, and his expression turned ghastly. However, he also knew that he couldn't panic at this point. If they made a false move, they could lose the entire tournament. It wasn't as if Shrek's advantage would last forever, even though they had the upper hand right now. After all, the individual round had only just begun. He summoned Meng Hongchen over, Little Meng, everything will depend on you later. You'll be up next. For the Academy's glory, give it your all. The teacher said in a deep voice. A weird radiance flashed across Meng Hongchen's eyes as she nodded her head slightly. Don't worry, teacher. I might not be able to determine the outcome but I can definitely change the situation. I won't let Shrek Academy have it easy, yes, we're counting on you. The teacher bowed slightly towards Meng Hongchen. Xiao Hongchen pursed his lips from the other side. He was dejected, as he believed that he should be the one to turn the tables around. While his sister's capabilities were special and could lead to unprecedented effects, she was likely to be greatly restricted under certain conditions. Her abilities weren't as balanced as his. However, he really was seriously injured. Even though he might be able to participate in the 2-2-3 fight, he would be useless in the individual round. Besides feeling dejected, there was nothing he could do. Bei Bei and Michael retreated to the edges of the competition stage. The heaven fiend Doluor didn't reveal any expression on his face as gestured and shouted, Match, start! Michael was an official team member, thus his powers were superior to the other two members before him. His abilities weren't as simple as they'd seemed when he'd faced Jiang Peng from the Imperial Profound Academy. He immediately displayed his true capabilities the moment the competition began. A series of metallic clanking sounds rang out as several soul tools attached themselves to his body. However, he was different from his other team members. There weren't many barrels on his body, but they were all located around his legs and back. A pair of blue, metal boots had appeared around his feet and legs. At the same time, two metal barrels had appeared behind his back. These two metal barrels were only three inches long, but they were more than six inches in diameter. The backs of these barrels were shaped like balls, which allowed them to change directions easily. Hui Yu Hao would find it difficult to control such an advanced soul tool, as his soul power was insufficient, but Michael could easily control this soul tool, as he was a class 5 soul engineer. Other than these two soul tools, the metal wings extended from Michael's ribs but they were not flying-type soul tools. Rather, they were there to help him adjust his aim and maintain his balance. In addition, Mikal, there was a thick barrel on each of his arms, as well as another huge, circular, ball-like object that seemed similar to a concentrated soul tool on his chest. Bei Bei fought in a similar style to most soul masters, as soon as the start of the competition was announced, he burst forward towards his opponent as fast as possible. Closing the gap between them was the best way that one could resist a long-distance soul engineer. Michael also made his move, the long boots on his leg flashing with light, causing him to immediately move a few meters laterally at a frightening speed. While he wasn't comparable to Chenin, he was not that much slower either. The soul thruster behind his back also shot out a little light as he moved laterally, although their radiance wasn't intense. However, it still managed to increase his speed significantly while the wings on his back automatically adjusted to maintain his balance as he moved. Hui Yu Hao and Hikai Tu were both awed when they saw these soul tools in action. Michael truly lived up to his name as a disciple that came from the best soul engineering academy on the continent. Michael's immaculate control of these soul tools had left them extremely amazed. He couldn't just dodge throughout the entire fight though. 
he lifted his hand while he was moving, and the barrel on his right hand fired towards Bay Bay. And scarlet, oval-shaped ball of light quickly shot out into the air and flew without any rhythm. Despite its erraticness, Bay Bay remained its target. What was strange was that it didn't let out any sound as it appeared. Bay Bay expression became serious and he stopped in his tracks. He waved his right hand and unleashed his blue lightning tyrant dragon, his first soul ring shining brightly. He then used his thunderous dragon claw to grab the ball of light. It was imperative for Bebe to understand what the offensive capabilities of his opponent were, based off of the two soul cannons on his opponent's arms. He managed to precisely grab the orange-red light ball, but a strange scene appeared. The lightning from the thunderous dragon claw was extinguished as soon as it made contact with the orange-red light ball. The ball of light stopped in mid-air, then began to shine even more brightly than before. Hikaitu had already stood up below the stage. He said in horror, that's an automatic soul cannon. To think they actually had something like this, where Yu Hao had once heard Fen Yu's description of such a soul tool. It was a powerful soul tool that Shrek Academy didn't possess. Once an automatic soul cannon was fired, the cannon shell would absorb all surrounding energy, then become explosive once it struck its opponent or was blocked. The scariest thing was that it could be also be detonated at any time. This meant that Michael could make it so that the cannon shell only detonated a few seconds after it was touched. Generally speaking, it would explode between 1 and 5 seconds after contact. After all, a cannon shell was a high-energy entity compressed from soul power, it couldn't be controlled for too long. But many things could still be decided within this period of time. This was the case now. When he saw the sudden increase in the intensity of the light, Bebe had no choice but to stop and leap to the side. The scarlet ball of light exploded after a second, its frightening the explosive force creating a burning, scarlet circle of light with a diameter of more than one and a half meters, and an even greater explosive strength, to appear. The light caused the air within a three meter radius to distort wherever it passed. Bebe turned pale and wanted to curse. This soul tool was too powerful. He was likely to be critically injured if he was struck head on even once. Fortunately, the automatic soul cannon fired at a rather slow speed due to its great power, as a huge amount of soul power had to be gathered before the cannon could be fired. By the time the first cannon shell exploded, Michael's second cannon shell had only just been fired from the barrel on his other hand. This type of soul tool was very useful, but the heat that it generated could easily cause the barrel to crack and couldn't be fired repeatedly. As such, Michael chose to fire with the other barrel. Ma Rulong had mentioned before that close combat wasn't his forte. These automatic soul cannons that had appeared in this tournament for the first time were his true trump cards. Of course, there was also the scarlet ball that started to light up in front of his chest, it was bound to be something powerful too. Michael's body moved rapidly as he attacked in a constant attempt to maintain the furthest distance he could from Bay Bay. This second cannon shell crossed in front of the path that Bay Bay would have to follow if he wanted to get to him. A cold radiance flashed in Bay Bay's eyes. This time he actively moved to collide with the cannon shell, rather than use a soul skill to intercept it. A cold smile was revealed on Michael's face. He thought to himself, are you trying to dodge my attack? My cannon shell has locked onto you, you can't escape it. Once you're hit by it, you'll be stuck, and I'll be able to exact revenge for my brothers. When the cannon shell reached in front of Bay Bay, he lifted his left hand and grabbed it. Why did he grab hold of the cannon shell? This was what every spectator wondered. In the Sun Moon teen's eyes, his arm was bound to be crippled, even if he didn't die. Bay Bay's movements were sequential. The moment he grabbed the cannon shell, his footsteps became slightly faster. As he slid towards the cannon shell, his body became slightly illusory. He let go of the cannon shell, but the cannon shell came sticking back towards him as it tracked him. But Bei Bei also wrenched his left hand downwards at this point. The cannon shell, which was a less than a foot away, seemed to be guided by his palm, and was slammed into the ground. It was completely smashed by the impact. Bei Bei then burst forward with increased speed as he propelled himself off the ground with the tips of his toes, increasing the gap between the cannon shell and him to over three meters. A boom resonated from behind him, it was as if the sun seemed was shining brightly at his back, I have to return your favor. Since you've given me two eggs, I'll give one to you in return. Bei Bei's right wrist jerked as he flung a pitch black, ball-like entity towards Michael. This ball-like entity was oval-shaped, and its trajectory was as unhythmic as the automatic soul cannon shell. It drew an arc in the air as it flew towards Michael. Michael had just fired his third cannon at this point and was shocked by how his second cannon shell was smashed onto the ground by Bay Bay. However, he immediately adjusted his third cannon so that its cannon shell would blow apart instantaneously. If Bay Bay dared to use the same method again, the cannon shell would explode the instant he made contact with it. 
However, it was a pity that he couldn't absorb any further energy from Bei Bei's soul skills, as it was unlikely that Bei Bei would use them again. The two ball-like objects seemed to interlace as the scarlet ball of light reached Bei Bei almost instantly. Bei Bei performed an unexpected limbo-like action as he burst forward. He continued to advance, but his upper body was bent backwards. He flung both of his hands backwards too, causing the scarlet ball of light to be pushed backwards by a special force. Despite this, it remained locked onto Bei Bei, and continued chasing him after flying three meters away. A loaded arrow concealed in Bei Bei's sleeve suddenly flew out and struck the ball of light at this moment. Once Michael's automatic soul cannon shell was struck, it would blow up. In other words, it wouldn't continue to chase its target anymore. It wasn't so intelligent after all. A deafening explosion that generated immense heat reverberated from behind Bei Bei, but Bei Bei wasn't struck by the shockwave as he continued to advance forwards, well done. Even Elder Xian couldn't help but say when he saw this scene. He was immensely amazed. Bei Bei had dealt with his opponent's soul tools extremely brilliantly. Hui Yu Hao and Wang Dong looked at each other and saw the amazement in each other's eyes. Bei Bei hadn't resisted the automatic soul cannon with his blue lightning tyrant dragon, but with a secret weapon from the Tang sect. As the Tang sect's eldest disciple, he'd finally revealed the true ability that he'd concealed for so long in the tournament. He'd used the Tang sect's secret techniques. While Bei Bei handled the third automatic soul cannon, the metal ball that he thrown reached Michael. Michael wasn't careless, but he was still extremely scornful subconsciously. As an outstanding student from the Sun Moon Imperial Soul Engineering Academy, he was acquainted with the history of soul tools. Thrown soul tools had existed for a long time, but he couldn't think of any powerful ones amongst those this size. It wasn't just arrogance for Bei Bei to fling a thrown soul tool towards a class 5 soul engineer like him, it was much worse than arrogance. However, he didn't react to it carelessly despite having such an opinion. He lifted his right hand and the thunderous soul sword that he'd once used against Jiang Peng appeared. A bolt of lightning shot out and turned into a lightning whip that he swung towards the metal ball. Lightning was naturally attracted to metal. He wouldn't let the metal ball get close to him. A simple explosion wouldn't affect him with the distance he maintained from the metal ball. Furthermore, he was rapidly retreating backwards as he wielded the sword while also preparing to fire his fourth cannon. Bei Bei might be very agile at dodging, but Michael wasn't scared of Bei Bei getting close to him. In addition to this, he could tell that Bei Bei had exhausted all of his power dodging his previous three cannon shells. He fired this fourth cannon towards the ground in front of Bei Bei, delaying his opponent was imperative. A sequence of strategies formed in Michael's mind. The only thing that didn't cross his mind was the potential problem that the metal ball could pose to him, boom, the metal ball blew apart the moment it was struck by the lightning. Compared to Michael's cannon shells, this explosion seemed very mild, it was as if a watermelon had been smashed. It didn't even catch many people's attention. However, a gust of fog rose the moment it exploded. This fog carried a sweet scent that diffused in the air. As lightning flashed through it, the gust of fog surged slightly. Poison? This was Michael's first thought. He was called an elite talent from the Sun Moon Imperial Soul Engineering Academy for a reason, as a barrier immediately shone around his body. As he was a class 5 soul engineer, this barrier was naturally a class 5 barrier as well. Although this barrier couldn't withstand Ma Xiaotao's attacks or Xu Sanxi's descent of Xuanwu, it was still resistant against most Soul King level attacks. He believed that his defense was already very stable. While Bei Bei was quite intelligent to use poisonous gas, he was only delaying Michael's attack by a bit. Poisonous gas wasn't of much use against him. But was it really just poisonous gas? A soft crackling sound rang out. There was insufficient sunlight bearing down amidst the gloomy weather, thus Michael only briefly saw a black figure flash through the air. The crackling sound had originated from the barrier on his body. Afterwards, he felt his body turning numb. It was as if he had been stabbed, and his body became stiff. The most tragic thing was that the cannon shell he'd just fired had stopped in front of him. How could this have happened? Was it a dud? Two thoughts popped up in Michael's mind at the same time. He hadn't expect to face something like this. Furthermore, he didn't know what trick Bei Bei had employed. However, a beam of light descended from the sky and engulfed his body at this point. This beam of light shielded him when the cannon shell blew up. Everything had turned scarlet in front of Michael, and his gaze stiffened. His hair stood on end, and cold sweat ran down his back. If the beam of light had come even a second later, he wouldn't have been able to react in time. If he'd been engulfed entirely by that scarlet radiance, he would have followed in the footsteps of his compatriots. There truly was a thin line between life and death. The heaven fiend Dolor had been the one to save him. The things that had happened before had left this title Dolor on his toes. He'd already readied his only defense type skill in his palm. Once he realized that something was amiss, he'd immediately protected Michael. 
Bebe seemed regretful as he muttered, it seems like I'm better. He used so many eggs, but they were all inferior to mine. As the scarlet radiance slowly faded away, the muffled sound thunder could be heard from the sky. The weather became even more gloomy. But this gloominess couldn't compare to the Sun Moon team's mood. Since the Heaven Fiend Dolor had intervened, it meant that Michael had lost. What they couldn't comprehend was how Michael had lost. What was that metal ball that Bei Bei had thrown? Even most of those from Shrek Academy were confused. Secret weapon, it was definitely a secret weapon from the Tang sect. Hui Yu Hao clenched his fist and watched the lofty Bei Bei in awe. The Tang sect secret technique had finally appeared after many years of disappearance. However, how many still knew about the Tang sect secret techniques now? It was a powerful secret weapon from the Tang sect known as the clustered soul chasing balls. The black figure that had appeared was the metal ball. After the clustered soul chasing balls blew apart, countless ox hair needles had flown out. While these needles were poisonous, the poisonous folk had appeared in order to mask their presence. The clustered soul chasing balls were among the top 10 secret weapons in the Tang sect, and specialized in breaking down all sorts of defensive barriers. Even a class 5 defense barrier could only slow these needles down. In the end, the barrier was eventually penetrated by the needles, and the automatic soul cannon shell was detonated. Bei Bei had an intent to do the last part, however, that was just a coincidence. Michael collapsed just like that at the center of the stage. The heaven fiend Dolor's facial muscles twitched, and he burst towards Michael to prop him up. He quickly examined Michael's body. Poison? The heaven fiend Dolor was shocked and turned to look at Bei Bei. Bei Bei shrugged and said, don't worry, it's not lethal. I'll give him the antidote once today's competition ends. It's not like I can give it to him now, right? The 2-2-3 fight had yet to begin. Giving his opponent the antidote now would mean that he'd have another opponent to deal with in the 2-2-3 fight. What else could Huang Jinchu say? He could only personally escort Michael down from the stage. Shrek Academy had won yet again. Up until now, only one out of the seven Shrek Academy members had been eliminated, whereas the Sun Moon team had already lost a total of three members. The conclusion seemed foregone in this individual round. The healing-type Soul Masters were also helpless against the poison, they were only able to treat injuries. Furthermore, it wasn't easy to remove poison from the Tang sect. As the team leader of the preparatory squad, Bei Bei's move was very intelligent. Now that one of them had been poisoned, the Sun Moon team would be more cautious in the later stages. If they went all out, who would be able to provide them with the antidote after the competition ended? Meng Hongchen sauntered onto the competition stage. Her looks couldn't compare to Jiang Nanan's, but she was still a charming and good-looking young girl, and was about Jiang Nanan's age as well. Her flowing locks were a rare wine-red color. It was a deeper hue than Ma Xiaotao's, and resembled mellow wine flecked with pale hues. However, her eyes weren't red, but were blue. This characteristic was different from her brother, Xiao Hongchen. She was the fourth contestant from the Sun Moon Empire's team to participate in the single elimination round. The Sun Moon Empire's team only had four individuals left who could still participate, including her and her severely injured elder brother. The Sun Moon Empire's team had won the group battle, but everything was still going according to Wang Yang's plan and arrangement. Shrek Academy's team could be said to have obtained an overwhelming victory in terms of battle strategy and tactics, all their patience in terms of battle strategy in the competition before this had been worth it at this moment. Who else did Shrek Academy have to send out in this single elimination round? Other than Bei Bei, Shrek was able to send out the control-type Soul King, Ling Luo Chen. After that, there was still the White Tiger Soul Emperor, Dai Yuan, as well as the evil Phoenix Soul Emperor, Ma Xiaodao. As for the Sun Moon? Besides Meng Hongchen, they only had a food-type Class 5 Soul Engineer, Xiao Xiaofen, their team leader, Ma Rulong, and the heavily wounded Xiao Hongchen. Soul Engineers should generally have an advantage over Soul Masters at the same level. However, which of the contestants from Shrek Academy wasn't a monster? Why had Michael lost? Because he hadn't expect Bei Bei's battle tactics. According to their research, Bei Bei's greatest strength was his martial soul mutation on the battlefield, a cross between the Blue Lightning Tyrant Dragon and the Golden Holy Dragon. He'd been on guard against this the whole time, which was why he hadn't used his strongest offensive move. He'd unwittingly lost the battle due to that single clustered soul-chasing ball without even getting to unleash his full potential. The battlefield could have a myriad of changes in an instant, but every single one of Shrek's team members were pervertedly strong. 
Two soul ancestors had stepped onto the battlefield and defeated three soul kings that were also class 5 soul engineers. How powerful would their soul kings and soul emperors be? How would the Sun Moon Empire's team stand a chance in the single elimination rounds? How would they stand a chance in the following 2-2-3 battle? The final situation was quickly unfurling after this abrupt turn, with the scales of victory slanting in Shrek Academy's favor. This was Shrek, the monster academy with over than 10,000 years of history. Meng Hongchen stepped onto the competition stage under such circumstances, and faced her opponent, the sole ancestor with the blue lightning tyrant dragon, Bei Bei. Freewebnovel.com, begin. The round that the Sun Moon Empire's team couldn't lose began following the heaven fiend Dolor's bellow. Bei Bei growled as his feet slid forward, and his entire body rocketed towards his opponent at the fastest speed possible. He'd already completed his original task once he'd achieved victory against Michael. He knew that he couldn't use the same tactic to attain victory a second time. But despite this, and even if he lost, he wanted to whittle down Meng Hongchen's power as much as possible in order to lay down a solid foundation for Ling Luochen, who would be the next to come on stage. Wang Yang's current emotions weren't relaxed at all as he stood below the stage, despite their recent victory. His eyes were fixed upon Meng Hongchen, who just stepped on stage, but he couldn't explain the sudden ominous feeling that had surfaced in his heart. A profuse number of talents and prodigies had come from Shrek Academy. Xu Sancha and Bei Bei had already sufficiently proven their status as the current outer courtyard stars, as well as the future inner courtyard's pillars with their background and prowess. But what about their opponents? The Sun Moon Imperial Soul Engineering Academy wouldn't have become Shrek Academy's nemesis over the past few thousand years if they were that easy to deal with. Xiao Hongchen's abilities were enough to attract Wang Yang's attention. Xiao Hongchen would have probably caused great trouble and danger for the Shrek Academy team if not for Jiang Nanan's sudden outburst of strength which had stopped her opponent in his tracks followed by Dai Yuehang's all-out strike, who wasn't even 15 years of age. Then, what about Meng Hongchen? Xiao Hongchen was the Sun Moon Empire's trump card, and his ability had been to control metal. What was Meng Hongchen's ability? This befuddling question mark had been in Wang Yang's mind this whole time, and still remained unanswered. Meng Hongchen's expression remained as calm as ever as Bei Bei lunged towards her. She wasn't like her comrades, who'd released their soul tools or engaged in long-range combat right from the start. Her feet shifted from beneath her body and she traipsed forward, right towards Bei Bei. At the same time, conspicuous changes began to occur all over her body. Her flowing wine-red hair turned snowy white, while her icy blue eyes instantly turned bright red, the kind of color that made it seem like her eyes were dripping with blood. Whoever witnessed the sudden change in her eyes would definitely be shaken by the sight, some would even feel terror. Bei Bei had a sensation similar to when he'd faced off against the evil soul master, the envoy of the death god, when he saw her, and an inexplicable chill instantly ran up his spine. It was just at this moment that the sky rang out with the crackling sounds of a lightning strike, and a thin drizzle flitted down from the sky. Meng Hongchen raised both of her hands into the air and suddenly pushed forwards. Every part of her skin that was visible became a snow white color, and appeared sparkling and translucent. However, her eyes still seemed extremely out of place. They were incredibly breathtaking and electrifying. Her palms seemed to faintly flicker with a pale green luster as well. Meng Hongchen didn't look like a soul engineer at all. Instead, she appeared much more like a soul master. However, not a single person from Shrek could tell what her martial soul was, not even the Doubt Idol or Elder Xian or Wang Yang. While everyone was flabbergasted by Meng Hongchen's martial soul, both parties were headed straight at each other with dazzling speed. The distance between them was quickly reduced to less than 30 meters. The first one to attack was Meng Hongchen. She raised her hands and drew two semicircles outwards, then pushed them in Bei Bei's direction. Her soul rings began to sparkle brilliantly on her body, two yellow, two purple and one black. This was the standard and most optimal soul ring combination. At the same time, a light projection gradually drifted into view behind her. It was a toad, spotlessly white like a piece of jade, and with eyes the same blood-red color as hers. However, the martial soul beast transformation that had appeared on Xiao Hongchen's body didn't appear on Meng Hongchen, this is, Wang Yang's eyes instantly widened. He perused and scrutinized all sorts of encyclopedias and archives from the academy about martial souls from the moment he joined Shrek. He had a strangely familiar feeling about the white jade-like toad before him, and knew that he'd seen this in some ancient record before. A beam of white energy that was a foot long in diameter surged towards Bei Bei from Meng Hongchen's palms when she pushed them out, and her first soul ring lit up along with it. 
the reason why she'd released a beam of energy and not radiance was the fact that this beam didn't seem quick at all. There were tinges of green throughout the whiteness and the whole thing seemed like a luminous patch of mist. What was even more sinister was that the tiny raindrops drifting down from the sky naturally infused themselves naturally into the beam of energy which made it look like a whirlpool. Bebe naturally wouldn't underestimate an unknown martial soul. His personality was a lot calmer and more stable than Xu Sanchi's, thus he abruptly halted in his tracks. His third soul ring, the thunderous fury, lit up first, followed immediately by his fourth soul ring. He'd actually used his most powerful offensive move, the thunderous dragon head, at the very beginning of the battle. Bei Bei knew just by looking at Meng Hongchen's appearance that it would be extremely difficult for him to emerge victorious. Meng Hongchen seemed to exude an air of mystery in whatever she did. Thus he'd assigned himself a simple target, he would grind his opponent down as much as he could. Right at this moment, Meng Hongchen made a decision that was completely beyond everyone's expectations. She didn't intend to fight fire with fire and neither did she push forward, instead, she stood up on her tiptoes, and her body sprung into the sky like a bolt of lightning as she flew backwards with bedazzling speed. The thunderous dragon head barreled forward and blew the white mist energy that she'd unleashed into smithereens, then proceeded to chase after her with the sounds of thunderous howls and dragon-like roars. Meng Hongchen displayed astonishing agility as she arrived on the competition stage's edge with two flips before she abruptly leapt to the side. The thunderous dragon head was able to lock onto its target. However, instead of chasing after her, it proceeded to crash into the protective barrier surrounding the competition stage with a loud boom. Innumerable streaks of lightning erupted when it struck the protective barrier, causing a sphere of lightning that was over three meters in diameter to appear. Several seconds passed before it gradually dissipated. Meng Hongchen didn't move an inch as she dropped back onto the ground. She didn't take the initiative to launch another attack, nor did she do anything else, she just watched Bei Bei on the other end of the stage. Bei Bei just stood there, his gaze a little lackadaisical. There was a trace of disbelief in his eyes, but the twinkling glow in his eyes was dwindling with tremendous speed. Boom! Bei Bei's body collapsed backwards onto the competition stage just like that. He didn't move an inch after the initial bounce when his body first crashed onto the stage. The audience looked on with bewilderment while everybody from Team Shrek stood up in unison, their expressions that of intense disbelief. How could this be? It was clearly Bei Bei's thunderous dragon head that had broken through his opponent's attack. How could he just crumple onto the ground, unconscious, when he hadn't even touched his opponent? What exactly had happened? Even the heaven fiend Donor looked a little dazed, as not even he knew the reason why Bei Bei had fainted on the spot. There was no reason for him to collapse, no matter which perspective he looked at it from. However, the truth was that he'd gone down, which meant that the Sun Moon Imperial Soul Engineering Academy was victorious this round. The heaven fiend Dolor used a strand of gentle soul energy to carry Bei Bei's unconscious body towards Shrek Academy's team members. Hua Yu Hao hurriedly came forward and grabbed his senior brother, and realized that Bei Bei's face was extremely pale. All it took was that tiny moment before his breathing became extremely weak. It felt as if his vitality had been frozen, but the more frightening fact was that Bei Bei's skin color had become as white as Meng Hongchen's skin, except that he didn't have her crystal-like translucence. Meng Hongchen gradually stepped into the stage center, then she glanced at the other team members from Shrek with a pair of chilly eyes. She raised her right hand and pointed at the troop in the waiting area and coldly said, Next. Ling Luo Chen slowly straightened her back. The third contestant from Shrek Academy's team was her. Suddenly, Wang Yang and Hua Yu Hao exclaimed at practically the same time, I know what her martial soul is. I finally remember. The first sentence belonged to Hua Yu Hao's, while the latter was Wang Yang's. Hu Yu Hao's judgment came from the Ice Jade Emperor Scorpion, who'd just been abruptly shaken awake inside his mind, while Wang Yang's determination came from his accrued knowledge from reading a myriad of materials. Hu Yu Hao and Wang Yang exchanged a look, then shouted at the same time. Her martial soul is the Vermilion Ice Toad. It's extremely poisonous. The Ice Empress was in a deep slumber inside his spiritual sea, but she'd been awakened the moment Hu Yu Hao caught Bei Bei and had said the Vermilion Ice Toad's name. Bei Bei hadn't let Michael unleash his full potential and he ended up with the same fate. The Golden Holy Dragon's radiance would no longer shine in this season's grand competition. Hui Yu Hao and Wang Yang's unified exclamation was so loud that even Meng Hongchen heard it from the competition stage. She glanced towards Shrek Academy's waiting area, then grunted and said, You guys are from Shrek after all. Looks like you do know some things. The competition carried on, as the single elimination rounds couldn't be stopped halfway. 
Hao and Wang Yang's words were clearly meant to remind Ling Luo Chen as she stepped onto the competition stage. However, both of their faces were full of worry and anxiety. The rain was becoming even finer. There was no doubt that Ling Luo Chen's ice type control abilities would receive a great boost under such a deluge. However, wouldn't the downpour also create many perfect avenues for poison to spread? Someone with Bei Bei's cultivation and with the blue lightning tyrant dragon's natural resistance had lost the ability to battle in just a few gasps of breath. One could only imagine how intense the vermilion ice toad's poison was, and Meng Hongchen was already a class 5 soul engineer. Ling Luo Chen walked on stage with a calm look in her eyes and stood before the judge. Shrek still had the advantage in the single elimination round for now as she was the third contestant, while Meng Hongchen was the fourth. The light drizzle continued as both parties gradually retreated to their respective corners. Meng Hongchen's expression at this moment was like an arrogant and aloof peacock. Ling Luo Chen moved back to the edge as she breathed out lightly. The raindrops around her body drifted away and couldn't touch her body at all, begin. Ling Luo Chen immediately made an extremely magnificent and gorgeous move. She released her martial soul, a soul rings naturally appearing as well. The moment they came into view, all five of her soul rings started to sparkle alternately. Ling Luo Chen had actually used all five soul skills one after another within a span of three breaths. Everybody could see that all five circles of light were flickering alternately, from her first hundred-year soul ring to her last ten-thousand-year soul ring. This was no longer about simple tactics or tricks, it was more about her personal understanding of ice. Soul masters couldn't possibly unleash so many soul skills with such dazzling speed under normal circumstances, yet Ling Luo Chen had managed to do so. She had complete control over ice and had thus made use of the connection between her soul skills and exploited their relationships. Not only had she unleashed five soul skills within such a short period of time, but she'd also managed to reduce their consumption by about 30%. Every single disciple from Shrek Academy that could enter the inner courtyard could be described as both talented and prodigious. Following her five soul rings alternate sparkling, the first thing that appeared in her palm was naturally her ice staff. She raised her ice staff into the air as her soul rings continued to flicker, and a crystal-like ice armor covered her entire body, even her mouth and nose were completely protected. At the same time, an icy prison descended upon Meng Hongchen and trapped her inside. The sprawling ice mist erupted with Ling Luo Chen at the center, followed by her ice brilliant halo. The temperature on the competition stage instantly dropped to 50 degrees below zero, the ice mist's extreme coldness permeating and wreaking havoc within the stage's protective barriers at lightning speed. Most of the audience didn't really appreciate soul masters like Ling Luo Chen, as she would greatly affect the competition's visibility the moment she made a move. The ice mist swiftly blanketed the entire competition stage, making it so that nothing else could be seen on stage. Both Shrek Academy's team members and the Sun Moon Imperial Soul Engineering Academy's team members were as nervous as ever inside of their respective waiting areas. Victory was imperative to Shrek Academy in this round, as a loss would mean that their advantage would disappear. Even though they still had two powerful soul emperors, their opponent's team leader had yet to step out either. A minute passed, and then two minutes passed. Soon, five minutes had passed in the midst of everyone's agonizing anxiety. The ice mist covering the entire stage gradually dissipated. When everything that was on stage became visible, everybody could see that Meng Hongchen was still standing inside the icy prison. Her pale white skin seemed to be even more pale at this point, as it was covered in a layer of frost. Ling Luo Chen also remained in her original spot on the other side, as her ice staff was raised high above her head, while her entire body was covered in her ice armor. Was it over? Who'd won the round? The heaven fiend Dolor, Huang Jinshu, stood at the center of the stage, as he was the judge. A layer of starlight had condensed into a protective barrier that enveloped his body within it. It was obvious that he was rather fearful of the battle that had transpired before him. At that moment, piece after piece of thin ice drifted down from Meng Hongchen's body following a series of crisp crackling sounds which shattered into dust as they fell to the ground. There was still a look of disdain paired with a faint smile on her face, did you think that ice could block off my poison? It's a pity for you, as my martial soul is an ice type one as well. Passing venom through ice is my forte, thus your loss is not unjustified. Blue light flashed through her right hand as she spoke, a blue long sword appearing in her hand. She slashed it in front of her body, and a chilly and sinister blue light flickered as she cut open the ice prison which Ling Luo Chen no longer had control over. She then elegantly sauntered out from inside, the Sun Moon Imperial Soul Engineering Academy is victorious. Shrek Academy, send forth your next contestant. The heaven fiend Doluo waved his arm in the air, 
and a sphere of light enveloped Ling Luo Chen and sent her off the competition stage. Ling Luo Chen was like an ice statue. Hui Yu Hao was the one who caught her yet again. He tapped her and instantly dispelled the ice armor that was enveloping her body. Ling Luo Chen had completely lost consciousness like Bei Bei before her, even the color of their faces was identical. Such powerful poison. Wang Yang was also overcome with a haze of terror. No matter how intelligent he was, and no matter how well he could arrange battle strategies, he was at his wit's end, and could only look on helplessly in the face of such a situation. Who would have thought that such a formidable poison soul master would emerge from their opponent's camp? Both Bei Bei and Ling Luo Chen had been defeated in battle without even having a chance to directly clash with their opponent. Hui Yu Hao would be able to get rid of a pure ice poison. However, even though Meng Hongchen's dual-type venom origin was ice-based it also contained traces of fire inside of it as well. The moment the outer layer of ice-type venom was removed, the fire-type poison inside was likely to be unleashed. One misstep could cost Ling Luo Chen her life, how could Hui Yu Hao dare to take this risk, next? Meng Hongchen's voice, akin to the harbinger of death, could be heard once more. Her expression was still condescending and extremely arrogant, but this single word caused an immense pressure to fall onto Team Shrek inside of the waiting area. She defeated two people in a row, both of which could be described as effortless victories. Meng Hongchen was the Sun Moon Imperial Soul Engineering Academy's cornerstone at this point, as both parties had now been pulled back onto the same footing in terms of able-bodied contestants. Dai Yuahan gradually rose to his feet, his brows furrowed. Wang Yang had explained the Vermilion Ice Toad situation to the best of his ability to the rest of Shrek's team while Ling Luo Chen was battling with her opponent. The White Tiger was ferocious enough, but it still belonged to the same category as Bei Bei's Blue Lightning Tyrant Dragon. Bei Bei hadn't been able to resist Meng Hongchen's poison, would he be able to as a sole emperor? Dai Yuahang didn't know the answer to this question. Yet, even if he knew he wouldn't be able to resist it, how could he just chicken out? Both the emperor and his own father, the white tiger duke, were watching. The despondence and exasperation that Dai Yuahang felt in his heart was already at the highest possible level, causing veins to pop out all over his forehead. He'd rather challenge a soul sage than fight someone like Meng Hong Chen. It wouldn't be much if he won, but it would be an embarrassment if he lost, and he'd be humiliated in front of the fast audience. The list was fixed and couldn't be changed, however, so he could only gather his courage and prepare to engage in battle, Dai Yuahang. A deep voice rang out from beside his ear, Dai Yuahang turned around. Ma Xiaodao was the one who'd just called his name. Ma Xiaodao had completely suppressed the evil fire in her body during their period of adjustment and recovery before this, and she'd even regained much of her soul power through a milk bottle. Ma Xiaodao gazed at him, and a serious look flashed across her eyes. She lowered her voice and said, A venom is powerful, but she's ultimately still a level below us. Your three powerful transformations that are meant to amplify your powers will grant you a great boost to your resistance. Rain hell upon her in the time that she tries to take you down with poison. All of them were intelligent, this single pointer was enough. Dai Yuahang immediately understood the meaning in her words, and his eyes squinted a little as he nodded his head. He gave Ma Xiaodao a thumbs up, then leapt into the sky and landed on the competition stage. As the onlooker, he could see more of the game and immediately understood what he had to do with Ma Xiaotao's timely reminder. He possessed a powerful martial soul and was a soul emperor over rank 60. The amplifications that his martial soul could apply onto his body were extremely formidable. Under such circumstances, a certain duration of time was needed for poison to take effect on his body no matter how acute his opponent's venom was. Bei Bei's level of cultivation was inferior to his opponent, plus he'd been caught off guard. As for Ling Luo Chen? Their round had only concluded ten minutes after her ice mist had permeated throughout the entire competition stage. Meng Hongchen had mentioned afterwards that ice was ineffective in blocking her from spreading poison, but it was clear that she'd needed a certain amount of time to deal with Ling Luo Chen. Ling Luo Chen was a control-type soul master, and thus was more adept at controlling the battle rather than using brute force. He, on the other hand, was different. Meng Hongchen looked back over her shoulder at her own camp's waiting area as Dai Yuahang stepped onto the competition stage. The Sun Moon Empire's teacher in charge made a few gestures towards her, and Meng Hongchen rolled her eyes, then she nodded her head slightly to show that she understood. An added tinge of self-confidence instantly appeared in her eyes, step back, the heaven fiend Dolor habitually said. Dai Yuahang squinted slightly as he stared at Meng Hongchen with a chilly gaze. Meng Hongchen felt her body tighten up and a chill ran down her spine. She felt as if she was actually facing off against a ferocious tiger. 
He was a soul emperor from Shrek Academy, and his intimidating aura was cause her stomach to freeze. She quickly recovered, however, as her two previous victories had built up her confidence. Dai Yuehang's disposition seemed to change delicately when he reached his corner. He didn't move very fast, but the distance between every step that he took was extremely balanced and even. His aura kept becoming denser and more stable, as if he were a mountain that was gradually taking shape. On top of the royal city wall, the Star Luo Emperor grinned and said, My friend, do you think that Dai Yuehan will be able to defeat the Sun Moon Empire's rare poison soul master? The White Tiger Duke frowned faintly and replied, He can win if he plays it smart. However, he will still probably end up hurting himself even if he does emerge victorious, as poison soul masters are troublesome, especially those from the Sun Moon Empire. Your Majesty, you need to start taking that girl seriously. Indeed, the Sun Moon Empire is getting more out of control. The messenger that I sent to Shrek Academy returned yesterday, oh? What did Shrek Academy say? It was apparent that the White Tiger Duke knew about the Star Luo Empire's efforts to form a rapport with Shrek Academy. The Star Luo Emperor laughed and replied, what else? Those cunning foxes. They politely declined my offer. The Martial Soul Department's Dean, Yang Xiaoxia, sent a message, Shrek will never fall in. They will only nurture, and they will only protect. Shrek's influence will never leave Shrek City. The White Tiger Duke grunted and said, they've already become the Continental Guardians, yet they are still not coming out of the city. They are just not going to expand outwards. Dai Yuehan roared like a tiger as soon as the judge gave the green light, and his entire body shot forward like an arrow. His first, third and fifth soul ring immediately began to sparkle sequentially as he flew through the air, and he transformed as fast as he could. Golden fur and golden claws appeared as he used the White Tiger's shield, the White Tiger's Vajra transformation, and the White Tiger's Devil God transformation. These three powerful amplification skills could raise his power to the highest possible level in a matter of seconds. He'd already reached the center of competition stage by the time his third soul ring had been completely released, and it was obvious how frighteningly quick his movements were. It felt as if his fearsome aura was going to tear everything before him to pieces. Below the competition stage, Ma Rulong's expression changed again and again. He was also a soul emperor, but the rift between him and Dai Yuehang was simply too vast in terms of their martial soul and cultivation. He only had a 50% chance of defeating Dai Yuehang at best, even if he unleashed his soul tools with all his might. He had to admit that Shrek was superior in single combat at the same age and the same level of cultivation. He knew that he wouldn't even have a 30% chance of victory if he were to go up against Ma Xiaodao in a one versus one matchup. Meng Hongchen finally released her soul tools as she faced off against Dai Yuehang. An icy blue radiance glowed from 13 spots on her body, these 13 spots were her forehead, shoulders, chest, elbows, abdomen, hips, knees, and both of her hands. 13 spheres of chilly blue light formed from, then swiftly transformed into an exquisite blue armor that protected Meng Hongchen's body. Even though her armor covered her entire body, there didn't appear to be any redundancies in it. The entire set of armor seemed extremely delicate and fine, and was even engraved with magnificent bluish gold floral patterns. Meng Hongchen was already enchanting, but this body armor made her appear even more valiant and formidable. She also held a pair of icy blue long swords in both of her hands. The swords were thin, and were each three feet long. Three pairs of folded wings that were roughly a foot long extended from behind her body. The body armor in and of itself was enough for her to release a dense, chilly aura. Hikaitu's ability to distinguish soul tools was relatively advanced, thus he immediately gave his opinion. This was a class 6 soul tool, a full body armor with attached weapons and a flying type soul tool. Furthermore, a class 5 soul engineer would be able to use this class 6 soul tool. He was also positive that Meng Hongchen couldn't possibly have made this, this soul tool had definitely come from the hands of some expert. How old was Meng Hongchen? The fact that she was already a soul king was extraordinary, there was no need to ask to know how much importance the Sun Moon Imperial Soul Engineering Academy placed on her. It was almost impossible for her to have reached her current level of cultivation all by herself, and she'd also had to train in soul engineering at the same time. Hui Yu Hao possessed twin martial souls, and the Ice Empress, Sky Dream Ice Worm, and Electrolux all lived in his body simultaneously. Yet, even with all of these factors, even he wasn't confident that he'd be able to reach rank 50 and be a class 5 soul engineer by the age of 15. There was no question that both Meng Hongchen and Xiao Hongchen had had a lot of man-made factors involved in their growth. There was no use telling others what exotic treasures or herbs they'd ingested, but the sheer level of their cultivations also implied that their foundations weren't stable. 
Rank 30, Rank 60, Rank 70, and Rank 90 were the four important milestones that Seoul Masters faced. Meng Hongchen and Xiao Hongchen would experience a decline in their cultivation speed if their foundations weren't solid enough. They would have to stabilize and consolidate their foundations over a sufficient period of time if they wanted to achieve real success in the future. This was the reason why it was so apparent that Meng Hongchen hadn't been the one to forge and produce the Class 6 soul armor that she was currently wearing. This didn't mean that she couldn't display formidable prowess using this soul tool. Instead, she was using her own aptitude and abilities to show Shrek what the future development of soul masters on the continent was likely to be. Meng Hongchen's speed increased exponentially as her figure flashed once. She didn't intend to clash directly with Dai Yuan. Rather, the thin swords she was holding cut through the air as she stepped to the side. Two streaks of icy blue light appeared in mid-air like two bolts of lightning and formed something like a cross, then soared towards Dai Yuan. They didn't appear as if they would dissipate either, it was as if they were part of a soul skill. Dai Yuan didn't even attempt to dodge, as he was aware that he didn't have much time. He swung his tiger-like left hand and unleashed his soul power, causing five beams of golden light to collide with the center of the cross. His forward momentum remained unchanged and unaffected as he did so. Dai Yuan held his breath, but he still felt his entire body turning cold. It was as if something was invading his body with unstoppable force. He concentrated his soul power and relied on his body's powerful resistance to disregard this feeling as he continued his forward lunge towards Meng Hongchen. Meng Hongchen's first soul ring had been sparkling ever since she'd made her first strike, which represented her vermilion clear isto to cute poison. At this moment, a second and third soul rings lit up one after the other. An icy blue light ring extended out from beneath her feet and covered the entire competition stage in a matter of seconds. This was her second soul skill, Ice Venom Ring. Every ounce of venom that belonged to her vermilion clear ice toad would be amplified inside the Ice Venom Ring. She'd taken advantage of the cover provided by Ling Lorchen's Ice Mist previously to use the Ice Venom Ring to amplify her first soul skill and eventually defeat Ling Luochen inside of her own Ice Mist. When her third soul ring lit up, something strange began to happen. A mirror-like solid piece of ice that was about 5 meters in diameter appeared beneath her feet. This ice block projected her reflection, but the scene that appeared was extremely peculiar. Dai Yuehang arrived in front of her just as she finished unleashing these two soul skills. He shot out the white tiger's fierce light wave at her as soon as possible. The white tiger's fierce light wave was extremely formidable under the amplifying effects of his three transformation skills. A beam of white light as thick as an arm tore through the air, booming and crackling with energy. If this beam of light hit its target directly, its power wasn't inferior in the least to that of a class 5 energy gathering soul cannon. A sinister scene appeared at that moment, two Meng Hongkans suddenly appeared on the surface of the ice block. The streak of white light flashed by, and the Meng Hongchen that it was targeting simply dissipated like a shadow, while the original Meng Hongchen relocated to another position. Not only had she managed to evade the white tiger's fierce light wave, but she'd also managed to relocate to a position behind Dai Yuan. Her thin sword sparkled and transformed into sword shadows that pervaded the skies before they stabbed right towards Dai Yuan. Her sword's foot-long radiances became concentrated, causing the air around them to release chirping sounds. This was Meng Hongchen's third soul skill, Ice Reflection. It allowed her to switch positions with the light images of herself that were reflected on the surface of the block of ice that she'd released. Even though it wasn't as powerful as instant teleportation, it was an extremely practical soul skill that worked well in combination with her soul armor. Who was Dai Yuehang? He was the White Tiger's heir, and a soul emperor who'd stepped out from Shrek's inner courtyard. He could be counted as a veteran of countless battles. He was not in the least bit worried or frightened despite his opponent's unique soul skills. He immediately swept his tiger-like palms out behind him the moment that his left leg landed on the ground. The sharp talons on his tiger-like palms blazed with large patches of golden light when they clashed directly with the thin swords coming toward him. The thin swords in Meng Hongchen's hands were class 6 soul tools, their offensive power was just as strong as Dai Yuehang's tiger claws. She relied on her soul tool's power to forcefully bridge the gap between their levels of cultivation. Dai Yuehang had severely wounded Xiao Hongchen before this, thus it was natural for Meng Hongchen to feel an acute sense of belligerence when she unleashed her full power. However, he was still a soul emperor after all. Dai Yuehang would be able to overcome Meng Hongchen in terms of strength, soul power, and martial ability if he didn't have worry about the effects of her venom. Even though a class 6 soul tool was powerful, Meng Hongchen still wasn't a class 6 soul engineer, thus she was only able to temporarily maintain this balance. 
when Dai Yuehan took the opportunity to spin around and face her directly, she started to crumble under the pressure. Meng Hongqin's figure flashed once more as she used her ice reflection to relocate herself again. Her thin sword slashed through the air, their shadows permeating through the entire arena as she relentlessly tried to find any weaknesses or loopholes in Dai Yuehang's defense. This video will end here. Thank you for watching.